How you doing, everybody? Welcome to Suidobashi Station. This is where you'll find the Tokyo Dome of all places, and it's accessible by other train lines other than JR. And we're gonna go over the neighborhood here, walk around the back alleys, because there's a lot more to do than just that. In fact, this neighborhood has some of the, the ne neatest restaurants, most delicious restaurants in the city of Tokyo. Some of it uh, with some really well-known chefs. And it, it's a historical neighborhood. Just in the, in the shadows of Tokyo Dome and between there and Jimbocho is a place I like to come to quite often and haven't covered in this live stream. And today we will. Welcome to Suidobashi. I had a hard, I was actually going to show you um, Idabashi Station, but there was no signal at all. So I had to change up the plans and improvise. It happens. So Suidobashi Station is essentially, it's, it's JR, but it's also connected um, with the Mita line. And it's not that far away from the Maruno Uchi line and the Oedo line. So you can connect up there pretty, pretty conveniently to this area or just walk there from Jimbocho Station. Suidobashi, bashi means bridge in Japanese and that's exactly where this umbrella vending machine. I haven't seen these in a while. How much is an umbrella? Uh, big, that's actually quite quite large. Vinyl umbrella for uh, 790 yen. I think it's a pretty good deal if it's raining. Wow. Coming here. Hey, Brad Just to do is in the house. How you doing? Coming here is always very exciting because you do have that Tokyo Dome. Let's take a very quick look at that before we go the other direction. Korakuen is uh, also in this area. That that's uh, a park that's very famous. If you're in staying in this area in, in particular, you should check out that park. I did a live stream there just a couple of months ago for the the cherry blossoms also are, are quite beautiful there as well and there's a lot of history behind it. There's the Tokyo Dome Hotel. So this whole area is just one big entertainment zone in this direction but I've already covered that uh, about a half dozen times on this channel. So we're gonna go the other side right now. And it all starts with this bridge and this canal. You'll find historical markers all over the place as well. Check out this uh, engraving on the bridge here. Just have to get through all the people. Kind of gives you an idea of what this place looked like back in the Edo period. It was just a canal. You see some boats down there, wooden boats going underneath the wooden bridge. And do you see over there in the left, uh, left corner? That's Mount Fuji right there. So back in the day, from this angle, I guess Mount Fuji would be over here. Used to be able to be to see it when there weren't these buildings here, but the best time to see Mount Fuji is in the winter, not right now, because the warmer it gets, the more haze there is. And there are times where you can't even see Mount Fuji, even though it's a perfectly sunny day. Because I used to live on the base of Mount Fuji in a little town called Fujinomiya. And I would open up my window and go, where the heck is Mount Fuji? I'm literally like 10 kilometers away from it. It should be massive in the window, but the summer haze made it invisible. All right, here we go. Let's explore the alleys. Around here is Meiji University as well in the back alleys of Suidobashi. So there's a lot of cheap eats you can find, as well as burger joints, things like that. That's all in this area here. Let's take a Google map look at the Suidobashi area. You see Tokyo Dome right there. There's a Tokyo Dome Hotel, which I just showed you. We're pivoting around the uh, station, which is in the center of your screen there. 
And we're going to focus on those alleys across the street from Tokyo Dome. Yeah, right down there. I'm just crossing that bridge on the left side right now, when underneath the train tracks. And this area is some sky rise, uh, high rise buildings here. And the, the, the road systems are kind of all over the place, which makes it fun to navigate and get lost. But it's in those streets down there, you find a lot of stuff. And that's where we're headed. In case we do get lost, I do have a map here. <laughs> we started up there, so I might have to pull this out a couple of times. Already you see this really awesome cut of Wagyu steak. Oh yeah. Oh, one of my favorite um, um, tempura restaurants was here. Yeah, tendon. Oh my God. They would pull it out of the fryer and then they would put the, the uh, tare sauce on top of it. The, the spicy, um, uh, not spicy, sorry, the, the salty uh, um, sauce on the top of the tempura and it would crackle when the sauce hit it because it was so hot out of the fryer. Oh man, it would emit the smell radiating all throughout the restaurant. And then no music playing in there. The chefs, three chefs working together. They knew what they were doing. That place is gone, I believe. I think they, they didn't make it or they moved to another location. I'm not quite sure. But we're going to walk down this uh, street for, you know what, let's. It's a nice sunny day. The wind is very strong today, though. So but between the buildings and the back alleys here, it's not too bad. His night nightbot is broken. Uh-oh. All right, there, there it is. All right, the signal's getting a little weak in here. I didn't check it out, but we'll, if you have trouble seeing the video or we go Minecraft where everything gets a little blurry and pixelated, just let me know and I'll, I'll skedaddle and move into a, a nicer area really quickly. There's the Chuo line going by. And they're doing a lot of construction in this area. I wonder if it's another high rise building going up here. Most of the shopping's on the other side. The Tokyo Dome does have a supermarket. It has a uh, um, tons and tons of restaurants. There's also a roller coaster, which used to be one of the, I think it was one of the fastest in the world. A Thunder Dolphin is what it's called. You pay per ride. So you, I think you can get an unlimited ride ticket too, but usually pay per ride, which is about a thousand yen or was it like six fifty, six dollars and fifty cents or something like that. Yeah, it's in these alleys, man down these alleys, you'll find tons and tons of restaurants, little restaurants that serve some of the best food in Tokyo at some of the best prices as well. Let's keep walking down the street here. The whole idea is to get lost. Eventually, if you keep going in this direction, you make it to Jimbocho which is the publishing hub of Tokyo, the traditional um, place where all the big publishing houses had their headquarters, and you'll find tons and tons of old books in the stores. Some of those stores look amazing because they haven't changed in over 100 years, the ones that made it through World War II. So you see people, because it is lunchtime, people waiting uh, in front of shops lining up to get, uh, what is that there? Not quite sure, probably ramen?
There's a lot of hospitals in the area, probably because of the, there's Juntendo, which is a really famous uh, university hospital, as well as Meiji University here. So there's a ton of uh, ambulances that are going to be coming through here. So to the hub, if you're in central Tokyo and get sick, you're probably going to end up right here with some of the best doctors, I would say, because they're being taught medicine from the well, very experienced uh, people. And this is the Nihon University College of Law, so there's a lot of other kinds of universities. Itabashi, where I came from, had the University of Dentistry. So I looked around at people's smiles, and perhaps they had better smiles down there. I don't know. Something to look out for. Now, I was in this area for a reason. Uh, my friend Randy Santel is coming here. He's a, um, a competitive eater. He's really good at that. And his channel is really, really interesting because he takes on some hardcore food challenges in a, in a fun way. And you always want to see if he's going to eat it or what time he's going to fi finish his uh, meal in. So I'm happy that he's coming to Japan and I'll meet him uh, next week. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. Look at this bakery. Jera's here. How's the mask situation going over there? Um, it's up to you. You do not have to wear them at Wow. Wow, oh, gosh, fresh baked bread coming out of the oven right there. Oh, it smells, you get a, that sweet yeast smell. Aiken is here. Just when I've seen two weeks worth of Tokyo, you find me more to see. Yes, this is kind of a, this is kind of a queen. It's famous here because just the next station, Kudanshita, is where the Indian embassy is. So perhaps there's some connection, but something tells me that it just happens to be a traditional place of curry rice. So you walk around the streets here, you're gonna smell curry everywhere. In fact, here's a curry place right here. I think we can see the menu. They even have a uh, wieners. It's called wiener cut curry. Uh, there's a karage curry. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Hamburg curry. There's the tomato cheese katsu curry. Oh wow, and the prices are good. I smell more curry. It's not coming from Moss Burger, although they have some pretty interesting challenges. What the heck is that? The garlic burger. What? Oh, I thought it said ninniku, sorry. Kiniku. So it's a muscle burger, sorry. I get those confused. Ninniku is garlic and kiniku is, is uh, muscle. So <laughs> it's a muscle burger. That looks pretty amazing. And then there's the Friday burger, which looks like it's sauce and onion rings and uh, other stuff. B. Traven writes in an, a really good question here. Have you noticed much inflation? The prices look quite cheap still. They are, especially if you've got, um, if you've got yen, or sorry, dollars, and you're coming here with US dollars. It is quite cheap. Uh, the prices have not gone up much. For food like this, I haven't seen a big price hike, but it could be coming soon. Well, this is chukaryori. That, that's all 300 yen for that big plate of, of um, what is that, tomyo? I don't, I don't know. There's some uh, shrimp, ebi shrimp. Ebi chidi. <laughs> yeah, the, oh gosh, look, and they put, they put a, a bowl. That's not real. It looks real, doesn't it? It's just a fake bowl of, um, of their food. And you can, I guess that's what their special is right now. It's curry rice with uh, chicken on top. This place, even the Chinese restaurants have chicken curry. Like what? They got curry at a Chinese restaurant here. That's crazy. It's probably good. I don't, I've never seen curry at a Chinese restaurant though. <laughs> oh, my friends at the India Embassy are probably going mad right now because it, it's, it's hard to find really good Indian curry. It's kind of 
Japanese curry. I don't know. It doesn't quite taste the same, even at restaurants that say that they're Indian. And most of the people working at the Indian restaurants here are, are from Nepal, I noticed, or Sri Lanka. Not as many from India, despite having the most populous country in the world. It's kind of kind of funny like that. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to make a left and go back into the alleys now. Let's see what we can find. One of the best tempura places that I've ever been in in Japan was here. I was talking about a shop that you you would go to for lunch, but this place was one we went for, for, for dinner. I was taken out by my colleagues at Shueisha at the time. I was working at the big publishing house um, as a, it was an English editorial supervisor was my title. And uh, yeah, go out quite often in the evenings, in particular in this area. And the executive that I went out with a lot, he had an expense account. I think I've talked about some of the stories. The hostess clubs in Ginza in particular, we'd start there and then end at the hostess clubs in Shinjuku. <laughs> and then that would somehow make the last train. Or if not, be, hustle, be huddled up at a McDonald's waiting for that first train which happened uh, once or twice, but not too much. Oh, check it out. There's a park here, right in the center. There's even a sandbox here for kids to play in. Some swings. You can run around, a slide. It's quite nice. One thing about Tokyo that I really love is that you can find playgrounds everywhere in the, between the apartment complexes and the, even in Shibuya, if you go away from uh, Hachiko Scramble just a little bit, you'll find playgrounds, which is kind of cool. They might not be so big, but what was it? Nab Nabeshima Park is where Kengokuma put in a new toilet installation made out of wood. It looks like you're in a forest and you can, uh, I'm getting lost here. You can find some swings and a swimming pool, I think, was there too. Yeah, ja visitors are here at full strength, not in this area in particular, but I was walking around. Um, look at that blue sky. I was walking around uh, um, Shinjuku a few weeks ago, and just Asakusa's uh, sen uh, Sanja Matsuri was just. Uh, a few days ago ended the last day on Sunday. It's like people were coming up to say hi all the time and that felt really good. I wasn't even streaming and people saw me and go, hey, I know you. Say, yeah. I'm John. Or some people would recognize me and not know exactly what channel they knew me from. So I would quiz them. So what channel? You know me, but what's, what's my name then? Huh? It's kind of funny though. You gotta you gotta tease people just a little bit and have fun with it. It's okay. I'm glad that people are, are doing their homework before they come to Japan though. That's good. Alright, look at this alley here. Hey Arthur Vandalis here. Arthur, yeah, I wanna say sorry, Arthur. I think I missed a super chat you'd sent at uh, the last time, but it's nice to see you here today, buddy. Share a little adventure on a beautiful afternoon here in Tokyo. Yeah, this area also has a lot of churches. Do you see that? Itabashi had a really big church as well, built right in front of the JR station that had been uh, renovated. I don't know, it just kind of, uh, for me, I, I like to see them. I don't, I don't know, it just, it's a calming to see the churches around here. All the different, oh, here's a South Indian restaurant. Let's take a look, a quick look at the prices here. They do have a takeout bento curry. That's so cheap, 600 yen? How do they make money? Look at that lunch set. That's, that's $6. That's, that is really crazy. That's 700 yen, that's five, less than $5, I think, right? Wow. 
You can eat so well. Again, there's a lot of students here. That's probably why you'll see cheaper prices. Uh, this is an Ankake Chauhan. Chauhan, this is a fried rice restaurant. You can see, of course, the mushroom is frying. Is that a salt shaker or a mushroom? I guess the mushroom is frying the rice. And boy, does it look good. Wow, look at that spiciness on top of the rice. Oh my gosh, that's 1,200 yen or about, what is it? $8.50 maybe, something like that. A lot of uh, a family, that says Beijing, a lot of family restaurants in this area. I'm oh, sorry, it's a family run restaurants, I should say. There's a Japanese Teishoku restaurant. Teishoku is just like a platter um, with rice and miso soup on the side and a main dish. Like this. And it's quite healthy. Um, I know a lot of you might want to eat at McDonald's because <laughs> it's easy. I'm telling you right now, look at the different kinds of teishoku that they have here. And it's all reasonably priced. All of them are like $6 for the whole thing. Teishoku, I love te... Oh, look at the gyoza. I love teishoku. Oh, it's uh, tabehodai gyoza. You, all the gyoza that you can eat for... for 3,200 yen or 25 bucks. Oh my gosh. And they have all these different kinds of gyozas. What? Look at this. Cheese gyoza. Um, pakuchi, which is coriander gyoza. Mabo dofu, mabo dofu gyoza, like a mabo yaki. A mabo yaki. Ebi, uh, ebi yaki, grilled shrimp gyoza. Black vinegar gyoza. Uh, nira, which is a, a green um, vegetable gyoza. Yaki gyoza. This is crazy. Um, sui gyoza, boiled gyoza. Um, what is that? Natto gyoza, edamame. Like all this is, is uh, part of this price. That's crazy cheap. Oh, wow. All right, there's the, the coriander uh, pakchi gyoza. There's the shrimp gyoza. So you can see, you can just eat, as, eat until you explode for that price. That's, how do they make money? How do they make money? This is the best street for eating. Look at this. Miyabi. This is a cafe bakery. I think a lot of shops. Oh, you know what? This used to be this used to be a really old book cafe. I think they had to sell out or it fell apart or something. There are some really, really old buildings here. And it looks like this is new. There was a bookstore that looked like it was about to collapse on itself. Here's a a Thai restaurant takeout. The prices for Thai are really cheap too. All right, so check this one out here, guys. This is Ebi Maru Ramen, and it looks like it's quite famous because uh, there's a line. Let's take a quick look at the ramen here. Oh, that smells so good. It's a basic lobster broth ramen. Wow, do you see that? There's a glare on it, but I think you get the picture. So lobster is uh, very famous there. Whoa, look at that massive size uh, soba noodles. And you would get some tempura to put on top of there just to the side of it. Well, you dip the, dip this one in here, but you can get the tempura on top of bowls of soba. It's so good. Oh, uh, that's a great set, the mini katsudon soba set. That's nice. The price is, again, very, very cheap. I haven't seen a Burger King around in a while. Is that a double Whopper? With a hash brown. Um, see, I, I don't know. If you came all the way to Japan, I'm hoping that these live streams have value to you and you maybe don't eat at McDonald's or Domino's Pizza or something like that. You get something that might be completely different. This is um, taiyaki. Taiyaki is amazing street food. It's shaped in the fish of a Thai, which is a kind of fish here. Uh, gosh, I can't remember what the name in English is. But the prices are very reasonable at $2.50 or something. You have Uncle Red Bean Paste, Sweet Potato, and Premium Custard. 
premium custard. There's an old Kisa ten right here. Erika. Ramen place. Okay, now I now I now I recall. We're getting closer to Jim Bocho. And you're starting to see some more. Um, yeah, this is a, a, like a fried rice. You can get a bento from this window and the bentos look pretty good. So you can just get the stuff and eat it in a park if you wanted. Oh my gosh, how do they make money? That's $4 for that bento. That fried chicken bento is $4. That looks like a chicken uh, namban, just tartar sauce on there. That's uh, that's still four, four, 480 yen or something with the exchange rate, maybe cheaper. How do they get so cheap? I guess volume, huh? I don't know. Jack Lunch. This, is, this place is a seafood charcoal restaurant. Osaka Osakana Jack. And they have pizza, tendon, things like that. Seems like they're, it's a jack of all trades. Ah, and I see what they're doing there. Here's another ramen place here. And you get it from the vending machine right there. Um, prices are pretty reasonable to get the windows cracked. It is a warm spring day. I am sad about losing the, my favorite uh, tempura tendon place. But it seems like there's a lot of other options here. Now between the food at Sweet Obashi, I think Sweet Obashi may be famous for the food as you're seeing right here. The alleys have uh, even more restaurants in the alleys. They open up, now, a lot of the alley restaurants will open up only for dinner. They don't do lunch because again, there's so much cheap food here. They don't make a huge amount of money. Here's a yakiniku place if you're looking for one. This has relatively cheap prices as well for if it's A5 ranked, and it looks like it, it is here. This is a uh, gyutan, which is tang, tan, toro, wagyu ros. That's pretty decent prices. It smells good. Wow. Yeah, that is uh, some good looking wagyu beef here. They don't write exactly what kind. Uh, where it's from, sorry, the brand of the Wagyu beef, but that doesn't stop <laughs> stop me if I'm hungry. Kobe beef is over, I, I think it's overpriced because they have a brand that they've been paying for so long. Wagyu beef is, is Wagyu beef. It's, it's good just about everywhere. I've, I've, it's very hard to differentiate a taste difference. There might be some umami, some complexities in the fat of the Wagyu beef, but it's hard to, hard to really know. Yeah, this whole street between Sweet Obashi and Jimbocho is food. Here's a chicken restaurant. Check that out. What is that massive? So it's all you can eat rice. This is free. You can upgrade your rice to any size you want. Oh my gosh. And here's chicken namban. Oh baby. That, that, that doesn't look as good as the one they've had in Miyazaki, but I would not complain. And then here's some more karage. Uh, wow, black vinegar. It looks like a chicken namban. There's a chicken burger. A lot of chicken. Very nice. Uh, yeah, you don't have to look far. You don't have to go far to see the bookstores. They're all over the place, and a lot of them will be selling the books right outside. Um, almost all of them are in English. Or sorry, in Japanese. So you're going to have to be able to read Japanese. Some of them are older, but if you're looking for um, old manga, you might want to go to Book Off because you can get them used there. 
But here, there's sort of traditional flair to it, and you can find rarer books here. But since the digital age, a lot of them are going on PDF and stuff, so it's harder to... They're, they're making less and less money, let's just put it like that. Um, yes, I am. Are you hungry? Uh, unfortunately, this shop is out of business, too. There's a lunch place that looks family-run that's, that's still in operation, but a lot of them just got nailed during the pandemic, and they really couldn't uh, stay in business, especially during the... Um, state of emergency where people just weren't going to the office at all. Here's another gyoza restaurant. I'm kind of surprised at the, the sheer amount of gyoza that's here. Oh, this is a very famous yakiniku place. This has been on TV a lot. So it's, lunch is 45 minutes of all you can eat for a thousand yen. Are you guys seeing this? This is the cheapest yakiniku I've ever seen in my entire life. One person, all you can eat yakiniku, 1,000 yen. I, and I think it used to be cheaper. They put that sign in there. Holy macaroni. I think, yeah, this, this shop has been on TV before, so. That there's some people coming out of the shop. So I think it's quite a... They're looking for staff too. That is a deal. I don't know how good the meat is, but the price is dynamite. All you can eat, can you guys imagine? And I'm even the worst Japanese beef is really, really good. I just, I just, I'm like dumbfounded right now. How do they make money? How do they make money? In this day and age with inflation and everything? There's a hundred yen shop here and um, this Indian restaurant is shut down right now. Dotoru. They have some decent looking sandwiches at the coffee shop there. Here's another Motsu, Motsuya, so it's probably Oromon. They've got, uh, yeah, beef bowls here. Check it out. Liver. It's a bowl of liver. With rice and soup. That's a good deal. 100 yen, you can get an egg, I think. There's a uh, uma torodon. Uma is <coughs> horse. So this is horse meat. I guess it's like basashi. And then you can get uh, char, -gr char grilled, uh, uh, is that chicken? That looks pretty good. The uh, haramisu steak don. That is relatively inexpensive. Oh, that was interesting. That guy used a scanner and he could scan what drinks he needs to get to refill the machine and how much it's made. That was pretty cool. Oh, okay, so if you take a look here, on a, in this direction, you can start to see Meiji University, I think, right? In this direction. There's a place called Ogawa Machi. Uh, Ogawa Machi and between here and that station and kind of Suidobashi, that's where Meiji University is. And this is all under the influence of the university students. And that's probably why the prices are so darn cheap. Because university students, they don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of money. Yeah, we they, Japanese do eat horse as basashi. I've never seen a basashi farm, but I would be interested in covering it just out of curiosity. I think you have to challenge yourself a little bit, not just in what you eat. I, I mean, I would, I would cover it to try to understand it, I think. 
but they're certainly not horses that you would ride. These horses are on a farm just like um, cows would be. It's a Sapporo ramen place. Let's take a look at their, their offerings here. Oh, that looks good. Sapporo ramen often has miso in it and the noodles are, are yellow. They, put, they use egg noodles. Yeah, prices are pretty, pretty, pretty decent here, and that looks like a, a very good cut of chasha steak in there. You can get side toppings. The ajitama is always very popular. Um, I almost always get gyoza with my ramen. It, I don't get a larger size ramen. I'll get a small, a normal size ramen, and then I will get gyoza or something on the side. But they also have mabo dofu. Is that mabo dofu or chashidon? They take the chash steak. The steak on the ramen, they cut it up and put it over rice to give you a little extra meal. Sometimes you'll see mabo dofu on the menu, but it's Sapporo ramen, so I don't think you would see it here. Mabo dofu is one of my favorite dishes. It's a spicy tofu dish with meat in it. And vegetarians are like, why well, would you use tofu and put meat in it? It's because it's, you know, tofu isn't a vegetarian thing. It's, it's an ingredient used in cuisine in Japan. They mix it up. So, so tofu could be eaten by vegetarians, but not mabo tofu, unless you 86 the meat and put in like little tofu meat. All right, we've come quite a long ways. Uh, Suidobashi, 700 meters in that direction. Ogawamachi, the place I was telling you about, is in that other direction. And uh, yeah, we are here. So we've essentially walked from here uh, through the alleys in this region and then down to here. Um, I, wanna, I wanna take you down into these streets here and then we'll we'll end the live stream. So let's go. Let's go into this alley over here. Yeah, essentially, you could feed a family fairly, fairly cheaply in Tokyo if you find the region. If, if you're going to go to Shibuya or Shinjuku or places where there are a lot of tourists, you're probably going to pay a little bit more, a lot more, way more. In particular, places where there are a lot of businesses because they have business accounts. So if, if there's a, people are paying with their business accounts, they don't mind paying a little bit more. But usually the quality is, is really good because the reputation of the place is basically why they, people would pay more for. John writes in here, hey, John. I'm sorry for being late. I'm sorry you haven't been around. The trunk has been out of reception range. You've been traveling, haven't you? <laughs> wow, I love this alley. I think we should go. Welcome back, Chan. It's nice to see you. Sort of, in the trunk. Crack it for some air. Especially with summer coming. All right, here's a soba restaurant. So this is what I'm talking about with the back alleys, okay? You'll find more upscale restaurants off of that main street. Restaurants with stars. So soba is typically a, like an inexpensive, simple food, right? But they seem to have found a way to really do it better. And the prices are, are about double what they are off, off of that main street there. Again, one of the best tempura places that I've ever been at was here in the alleys of Suidobashi. I don't know where it is because the, uh, um, I guess you could say boss came in taxi, even though it was like a really short ride. <laughs> like, why are we taking a taxi again? Maybe to confuse me so I won't know exactly where the location is. Ooh, wow, look at this place. This looks awesome. Uopin is what it's called. It looks like an izakaya, but they do have fare outside. These are plastic. It's not real. Uh, this is a kaisen don, which is just seafood, seafood plate. Uh, this is negitoro, and uh, here's it. Looks like a chicken namban. It's pretty good. I like the fact that they have these models outside. It gives you a really good look. Oh, it looks kind of cool inside. I 
can't remember if this place was around or not. Here's another one. This is uh, Udono. They're serving uh, Evis beer and they have um, Oyakodon. Yeah, it looks pretty good. The alleys are the best. I have really enjoyed this live stream. Uh, I'm on a diet right now. I'm trying really hard to get back into shape and I'm, I would have totally eaten you know, this live stream, but I wanna, I'm sticking to this diet, I'm telling you. Uh, by the way, just a couple of shout outs here. Um, I'll be going to Hawaii uh, to film an episode of Only in Japan on, in the middle of June. So if you are in Hawaii, uh, we'll probably do a meetup, and uh, yeah, you can. I'll, I'll publicize it on Facebook as well as um, all the social media where we meet up. Um, hopefully, it's a place that's convenient for everybody in o Oahu. Probably around Waikiki. I'm not sure. <laughs> so I'll be there for a few days uh, filming an episode that maybe two episodes that I think is going to be really cool because you know Canada. Um, uh, Hawaii and Japan have a really strong connection, and I kind of want to figure that out. Uh, they've had Hawaii, um, uh, Japanese American governors, so that's kind of cool that that culture exists, and the Japanese food in Hawaii has its own special flair, I guess you could say. I'm kind of curious to try a lot of that, too. So only in Hawaii, only in Japan and Hawaii, something like that. <laughs> I'm looking for, I'm still looking for a hotel to stay in. I'm sure I'll find something Hello. good. Hello. 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 See you. Bye-bye. There you go. You people are pretty nice here. Um, let's see here. A diet of all-you-can-eat dumplings. I don't think so. You, can't you tell? I look a little bit thinner, don't I? It's sort of working. Yeah, this pandemic really got me out of shape. Where's the Y in Yebis? Why is the Y in Yebis silent? I'm not sure. The only thing that I can, I can guess is that the only thing I can guess is that that's the way that they spell it in English. And Ebis, Ebis is, 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 yeah, just somebody spelled it with the Y. I can't think of any reasons why they would have it uh, spelled like that other than that. So, yeah. All right, so if we can get to, um, 500 likes, I'll take you to Tokyo Dome and walk by there. But you have a very short amount of time to do that. And I can't actually see how many likes we got, so moderators let me know. It's up to you. I, I don't mind extending this for another 15 minutes. So you walk down the streets of Suidobashi, which is in the shadows of Tokyo Dome. It's a big entertainment area, which is really cool. Like that, those sweets are drawing me. Well, actually, we're not gonna get there because the gimbal died. What? How is that possible? How is that possible? The gimbal died. It's out of battery. What? Hold on, maybe I can do something. I have a battery here. This is why I don't like the DJI. Oh, my mic fell out. This is why I don't like the DJI Osmo 6. The battery is. Sorry, the battery is a fraction of what it used to be on the other DJI gimbals. I don't know, it's like a little dinky gimbal for 
quote unquote vloggers. Oh, you know what? Oh, hold on. The charge is by USB C, so. I think I can do something. I have a battery right here. Okay, bear with me. Bear with me. It's very uncomfortable. I, I guess I can't hot charge it. I can't. I can't use an external battery to power it. What? DJI, you know what? You're really not cool. Alright. Everybody, please think of a name for this new gimbal because that's our rule. When the gimbal is garbage, we give it a name. So, <laughs> the naming the naming platform is open, everybody. Think about that. If you can come up with a name, let me know. We'll name this gimbal now that it stinks. Um, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Jason. We do have a... And we have one more week for this design. This is a limited edition because the Mario, Mario movie is playing here in Japan and we have the... Um, the Shinjuku scene with uh, the Godzilla statue and Mario right over, right underneath him, doing battle. I got a picture of it real. Um, Gimson and Gimbo. Kevin, I'm not using that one. Toby Jr. Gimpy. I think I think we've seen Gimpy before. Gimbal McGimbal face. It's a mouthful. Gimpy. All right, Gimpy. Lakers. Oh, that is harsh. That is harsh. Nugget. You Nugget fan right there. Floppy. I like that chant. Actually, Floppy is nice. DJ Buzzkill. That sounds like a Peter Von Gom <laughs> name. <laughs> All right. You know what? I, it's to me, it's either Floppy or Gimpy. <laughs> These are like the worst names. Gimbal. That's that's creative. Gimbad the gimbal. <laughs> I like that. I like that one. Alright, we're gonna go with floppy. Lumpy. Sturdy. Sturdy is a reach. Like floppy, Chan is correct. Okay, floppy it is. Arturo. Floppy. You failed us, floppy. How dare you? But we will be back again for another live stream tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be driving, I get to drive out to film one more scene for a video that I'm making and then uh, uh, I'll probably take you with me then. So I got a rent-a-car tomorrow, so we'll go we'll go somewhere in the rent-a-car um, out, out to Kanagawa, okay? So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for bearing with Floppy. Floppy apologizes, although he, he, he would if he had any energy. All right, everybody, take care.